Hey guys, I am hitting you with story time, honey. It is story time. I want y'all to come in, like, share. I'm doing audio because I just want to just, I don't know. I think I just want to just bring the story. You know what I mean? I just want to bring the story. So come on in, guys. Come on in. Come on in. We doing the flashbacks, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. Guys, I'm just doing a little a little flashback. It's story time. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. What's up, Jan? What's up, Sally? Listen, y'all already know. Girl, are you excited? Oh, my God. I'm excited. I'm excited. Share, share, share. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Guys, I'm not going to be re releasing no names, okay? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, Jan. Oh, Jan. <laughs> What's up, Yolanda, honey? How you doing? Guys, you know, I've, I've been doing this uh, this new thing called, called story time, you know? And, uh, you know, story time. I'm, I'm telling the story. I'm doing a little flashback tonight. Back to my days when I was growing up in the, in the island. Guys, y'all know I grew up in Trinidad. But I was uh, a Yankee girl born, right? So, but I'm an island girl. And then we have some stories to tell. So, I'm just sharing it right now. Give me like two seconds. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't remember these songs, man? Don't remember these songs? All right, we gotta send one more, one more chat out. Yes. No names at all. No names. No names. Oh, I do got some good stories. I do. I do. You're not ready for this yet, boy. All right, guys. Cuba crew in the house, you know, for sure. All right, guys, listen. Let me tell you something. I am sending it out. All right, all right, all right, all right. Listen, I'm I'm gonna keep the music low, just a little bit low in the back. For Star Wars, this scene. Listen, oh my ah. Uh, my Kuva set people in the house. Oh my God. All right, guys. I'm going to just take this all the way down. I'm going to take it all the way down. Guys, listen. Let me tell you something. We had such a good time growing up. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to take all the volume off because, you know, we had such a good time growing up. You know, I remember, um, you know, I grew up with my aunt and she was just, I guess open because I was a good girl. I was a real good girl, guys. Um, good night, good night, Riri. Good night, Pasta. You know, guys, I, I was a good girl growing up. And, um, you know, but um, <laughs> sometimes you just meet that one guy. Sometimes. Sometimes you meet that one person. And they try to bring all types of things out of you. 
I definitely want to do a full show about, um, you know, how people lost their, their virginity. Now, guys, listen, this is the late night show. So, you, so you know, your, your kids shouldn't be up. I want you to really enjoy yourself and, and really listen to the stories, okay? Um, and, you know, we grown. I'm almost 40, guys. I'm like 38. So, you know what? I'm going to just tell my story. And whatever happened, happened. But I ain't going to call no names. So uh, I was about, let's say about 15 years old. 15 and a half, if we had to be exact. And um, <laughs> so where I grew up in central Trinidad, Tunnel was the name of this club. For those that don't know Tunnel. And Tunnel was unique because it used to cater on Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. to school age children. All right? Now, when you know you're going lessons on a Saturday or you say you're going to the movies and the movies is 4 to 8, you know, so you could go tunnel and have a good time and like yourself. And it was really a lot of, I would say the population of the 1 to 6 on a Saturday was mostly school age children. 14, 15, 16, 17, and of course, plenty maxi man. So if you was driving a maxi or you was a tout or whatever, you was in the tunnel probably looking for young girls, <laughs> right? Um, at that time, I don't think as a young girl, we kind of looked at it like that. We kind of find some of the older guys was a little bit sexy. When I said older, I mean 19, 20, 21, you know, that kind of thing. So anyway, it wasn't necessarily a fast type of girl. What's up, Joe? I wasn't a fast girl at all. However, one day, a girlfriend of mine, we were talking in school. And, um, you know, I had a crew. I had a little crew. If, if, you went to, if you went to the same school I went to, you knew I had a little crew. Um, but there was a, this particular friend of mine that wanted to go to Tunnel really bad. She wanted to go. She had met this guy. Um, and they were going to be there. He was going to be there. And she was like, you got to come with me. I being the only friend that didn't have type of restrictions that other friends had, you know, I was like, yeah, we can go. This is around, I would say this is around Easter holidays, probably in the year of, this is around, this is around March, actually, yes, March, Easter holidays, and around the year, I don't know what year it was, but I was about 15, so 95, or 96, it's mm -hmm. one of them. Well, we decide that we're going to go to Tunnel, but how can we go to Tunnel when her dad doesn't want her to go anywhere? She was raised by her dad, and um, she just really couldn't go. And so we decided that we was going to drug him. Now, guys, I'm not proud of what we did or what we intended to do, but it had to be done. And looking back on it, after I finish the story, I could see how the stars aligned. So we, in our school uniform, proceed to walk up the Coover Main Road to different pharmacies looking for sleeping pills <laughs> we're 15 years old and we are looking for sleeping pills and we're going pharmacy after pharmacy maybe there was three on the strip but well, we ended up walking all the way down like man like when you're if you're if you are in Kuva and you are going to Shogonas that is the direction that we're walking straight up to the KFC you know, that's a lot of walking in a hot sun. And we scored some sleeping pills. I don't remember what we told these people, but I'm sure we were, we were very convincing. I'm quite convincing, even in my school uniform. And we got these sleeping pills. And I go home, and my friend go home, and we proceed to wait. Well, I'm waiting for her to come to my house. Because we got to go to tunnel. I don't know. Nobody else is going tunnel. I don't know. I wasn't really even going tunnel that much at that time. Maybe I had been there a few times. 
I, oh, let me tell you this. This wasn't the one to fix. We was going on the Thursday night. You know, when the teenager is not going on a Thursday night. The adults, you know, the older teenagers, the 19, the 20, the 21s, they're going on the Thursday night. So my girlfriend is actually going to go meet this guy she met. And, um, you know, she's going to give her father, her father these pills. I'm at home. I'm waiting. I'm dressed. I'm waiting, and it's getting late, and I don't see her. Now, guys, in 1995, you see, I call and she holds phone. I ain't calling no cell. There's no Facebook. There's no social media. So all I got to do is wait, and I'm waiting, and I'm like, yo, she must be got caught. What? And all of a sudden, here comes my friend walking up the street. She jolly as fuck. She jolly as fuck. And I'm like, what happened? And she was like, girl, I gave him some pills. He didn't go to sleep. I gave him some more pills. He's out like a light. You guys, we, we, we're a little bit, we're a little bit wrong for this one. I'm telling you. But, um, it happened. This is what we did. This is what we did. So he's at home. He's knocked out. And me and her, we walking up the street. Now, guys, we're 15 years old. I don't know where I told my aunt I was going, but all I know was we was walking up the street to go to tunnel. And here we are in tunnel, and it is like the wrong night. Ain't got nobody there. <laughs> of all the nights you finally get to go, there's nobody there. None of my friends that I normally know, nobody. But her guy's there. And they are dancing and having a good time. I'm just standing there. I'm just standing there, chilling. I mean, I'm from Chicago, so everybody you know. And this guy approaches me. Now, looking back on it, he, he, he might have seemed a little corny. He had a ponytail. Uh, he had this big ass cell phone. And uh, when we were dancing, he said something like, oh, oh, that's my phone you're feeling. Like, you know. But I was liking his vibe. I don't even know this guy. I don't know where he came from. I just know I'm standing. My girlfriend is talking to this guy. And all of a sudden, here's this other guy. And I was like, wow. Okay, so anyway, we walk outside, all of us, me, her, him, her guy, my guy. <laughs> He's already my guy, okay? And um, so we go into, like we outside into the parking lot, and he's leaning up on this car, and he's, he pulls me close. Now, guys, let me tell you how I'm dressed at this particular point in time. And if you knew me back then, then you know. I had about 25 box braids in my hair with barrettes. That was the crisscross era, and I had my crisscross hair. Don't judge me. Don't laugh. It was a style. I also had one solitary single dread in the back of my head that was long as fuck. <laughs> and I have one, this armless, big t-shirt with some baggy jeans. And I'm at the club, looking like a total, what we would say a dyke would look like. But hey, different strokes for different folks. So I pick up this hunky guy. And I am, um... <laughs> I smell him and he has on this perfume that I know. Yeah, you got a little perfume. And I, and I was like, oh, my God, is that Vanilla Fields? And he's like, oh, yeah. How did you know that? And I was like, that's one of my favorite scents. And then he told me his name, and it was like a kind of a different and unusual name. And I repeated it. And he was like, oh, that's the first time anybody has ever pronounced my name. I was like, oh, you know, I've taken this foreign language for da 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 so we did we vibe and he gave me a wink i gave my wink okay oh yes and so you know at this time you know you exchange numbers and 
That was it. Honey, I was turned out. I don't even know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. No, guys, listen. It is not like no. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I am not a baddest. I'm a good girl, self-proclaimed good girl. I'm a good girl, okay. But I met this guy, and he was fine. Oh, he was so sexy. He, I just thought he was the sexiest guy I've ever met. And he was so like, he was so mature, you know. And I was reading an article the other day and they were talking about, you know, like younger women dating, quote unquote, older guys because they were more mature. I, I couldn't believe a guy was going to school with them guys and them was so immature. I, I was with, I mean, I had a group of friends, three guys, three girls. We all hung out together. I saw how them guys moved. They was, they was little boys. They was immature. Honey. I met me a man, okay? <laughs> so I was about 15 and a half, and this guy that I met, let's call him Ricardo. Ricardo was about 21. Guys, guys, I am, listen, listen. So, I'm 15, this guy's 21, maybe just turned, he just turned 21, yeah. And um, we vibing. Age ain't nothing but a number. Okay, 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 but seriously, we're just vibing. And I'm, I'm a virgin, so it's all good. I'm a virgin, I'm chilling. And I've had boyfriends before. I dated guys before. I dated a guy before that went to presentation college, and I had, was he the... And then I did another guy very briefly, but it was all, these are again, just young adolescent relationships that do not involve any type of sexual activity. However, in my circle, a lot of my friends were not having sex, but then there was a group of my other friends that were. Anyway, this is not what the story is about. The story is about how we met. So what happened was so we outside there talking he leaves he goes home i go home and i am i'm turned out i need to know everything about this guy we're on spring break it was like easter break sorry and i am like whoa we ended up talking and he was like yeah this is i you know i live i live central too and you know we could be you know we, we could connect and whatever and i was i was feeling it I was feeling it. I was like, all right, all right. So we go. Oh, so then my girlfriend goes home. Her dad sleeps the entire day. Let me just bring that part back. He slept so hard. He didn't even know if it was the liquor he drank. He don't know what happened, but he never found out to this day. And we're going to keep it like that. He ain't never going to find out. (laughs) <laughs> so so um so Ricardo and me kind of keep in touch you know and I go back to school honey let me tell you something I was in form four I go back to school listen my whole life done change yo I am a beaming Nobody ever hear me talk about no man but I was talking about Ricardo all the time like y'all whoo Probably got tired of hearing me talk about Ricardo. And honey, child, one day Ricardo said, I'm going to pick you up from school. And I was like, okay. And he showed up. Guys, I am not lying. I am not lying. This is 1995. Ricardo shows up in a yellow Audi. School gets out at 2.30. And Ricardo drives right into the school at that exact time when all the students are filtering out. Pulls into the yard of the school I'm going to to pick me up. Y'all, I am flattered, disturbed, stressed out, excited. I know what to do. I don't even think I told my friends bye. I just shimmied myself over and I jumped in the Audi. He used to work for a car dealership. So that's why he had that access. So anyway, a couple of weeks go by and um, now 
we're hanging out. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I am getting a lot of feedback where I live. My neighbors telling my aunt about this guy that's dropping me off. My aunt is confused because she's like, but she's home so early. Well, a few more weeks pass and I decide <laughs> I yeah 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 Google Google Yori Google Yori as a matter of fact look look for the movie um there was a movie called The Saint Honey oh my god anyway guys okay so now this story is gonna turn into how I lost my virginity you ready so I meet this so me Ricardo. Going, we going good and uh you know i would go to ricardo's house and you know i'd see his friends and we don't hang out and whatever whatever and um i was like i'm ready this is going down this is the guy he's gonna get it it's what it is I'm, i i literally i made that decision i don't know how many of y'all when y'all lost your virginity what age it was but if you can just drop your ages let me know but did you make that decision so I was scared. I never let anybody touch me, but this guy, I would, he's about to get it. So anyway, so one night, me and my two other girlfriends are at my house. My aunt went away. She went away to party, um, to, not to party. <laughs> she went away to work. She went away to work. And we at home and we decide, oh, we about to get drunk. Guys, again, my good girl. But I was a little curious. So we go, we buy like a nip of rum. We walking down the street, we drinking that straight, gagging, coughing, choking, but drinking it because we just want the effects. <laughs> we get home, we all laughy, giggly, having a good time. Ricardo shows up. Literally, I'm just like locking doors. Locking doors. My neighbor is calling me. He's singing. I'm singing back to him. <laughs> Ricardo is there like, what's going on? Scared. Just scared. Like, oh, my God, you're drunk. You don't know what you're doing. I was like, I know what I'm doing. I, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't. But I knew what I was doing. But I didn't know what I was doing. Anyway, it happened. It happened. I lost my virginity to Ricardo. Mere, mere weeks, maybe months into meeting him. But I made the decision and it was going down. Well, how do most teenager romances ha happen? Well, they go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. So I'm going to shift the story a bit. Now, I will tell you, oh, 22, he said, all right, okay. She knows her room. You already know I know my room, and So, literally, I am now in a relationship with a grown man. I'm 15 and a half. This guy just turned 21. But we're connecting. He's not, it is not a situation where this guy is like taking advantage of me or it's not like that. I'm, I'm aware as much as I can be aware at 15 and a half. But we're having a great time. We're hanging out. We're going to watercolors. One time we even had a matching tracksuit. It was blue and white. It was a matching tracksuit. And we went to some party together. I don't remember. So it was a whirlwind. Needless to say, he had friends and I had friends. Some of my friends became his friends and we all became friends. Not like that, swingers. But we were all connected. Now, I will tell you this. One of the most important times in my life was meeting Ricardo. Because one night... One night, um, as things happen, you know, I mean, listen, he's, he's a hot number. He's a hot guy. I think he's hot. You know, obviously other people think he's hot too. Well, 
he has quite a few ladies. Not necessarily all at once, I must say. But there was this one particular time when he was having a house party. Mm-hmm. And I went to the house party. Oh my. When I saw him, he had a line of hickeys on his neck. A line. Big house party. All the DJs, all the friends, everybody hanging out. Now, mind you, there was some opposition in his house because he was dating a girl that was this young. He never hid me. He never tried to hide it. It wasn't a pedophile kind of thing. It really wasn't. One time he actually brought me an article that said that teenage sex is on the rise. And he stuck it in the fence at school with a note that says, I'll see you later. (laughs) Okay. I mean... We laugh at these things now, but, and, and I'm sure it was alarming to a lot of people. I remember, um, one time being at his house and, you know, him being a guy, I guess, you know, just being more interested in his friends and whatever else he was doing, but I, me being pretty young and his cousin had asked me if I wanted to go to the store with them. And I was like, no, I'm good. Um, but you know, years later having processed that, I knew that she was trying to, to communicate with me. I, I, I don't know necessarily in what way, but at least, you know, a woman to woman, you know, I'm not going to let anything happen to you, that kind of thing. So I definitely always thanked her for that. Um, but Ricardo was never a huge threat to me other than my, you know, my heart, you know, because, you know, when you give your virginity, you're in love, honey. So Ricardo has these lines of hickeys all down his neck and he says oh I'll talk to you later you want to talk to me later in the event in your house party with the line of hickeys on your neck going all the way down your neck well he proceeds to walk me now I'm 15 years old I am in another part of the country that's 20 minutes away and I traveled it is about 9 p.m. I was brave. I had a lot of balls. When I look back on, when I think about these things now, I definitely had a lot of balls. Um, So he has these hickeys on his neck. And he, he, he is like, he's like, I'm, you know, let me take you home. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll walk you to get a taxi or whatever. One of his friends intercedes and they're like, no, 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 no. We got her. She good. And then they're talking to me and they're making light of the situation and, you know, they put me in a taxi and I get home. And I'm just devastated. I'm so mad. So I'm here and he's dating this girl from around the way. Let me tell you what this girl looked like. She was about 5'9". Kind of stocky. But not obzucky. You know what I mean? And she used to always wear white t-shirts. That she would roll the sleeves up and black tights. And she had a haircut like a guy. Like real low. And she used to wear a choker. And this was her outfits all the time. I don't think I ever seen this girl wear nothing else but that. True talk. But he got involved with this woman. And one day I went to Tunnel and I heard. I heard that he was there not at tunnel but he was in he was djing at another event he's a dj and thing too that one reason next reason why i wouldn't date no dj man (laughs) so anyway so i go jump in a taxi from tunnel leave all my friends and go to kuva and there's a club that used to be on the kuva main road and as i walk in in the club he walking out with the girl in the back with she roll up white t-shirt and she black tights and she choker with she man head cut. And he saw me and he's like, <sighs> like his expression was like, I ain't be for the drama, right? 
And he was like, he, he told her, whatever he told her. And he came and he was like, listen, I'm, I'm going to get your taxi. I'm going to take you home. And I, you know, and I'm going to call you tomorrow. Man, I'm stupid. I'm like, I'm like, okay. I go back down to Shagornas. Why when I go to Shagornas, there's this little Indian guy tracking me real hard. Now, I'm always seeing this guy when I go tunnel, right? But everybody know I'm with Ricardo. Everybody know this. Everybody know this. Come to find out he's friends with the ex. The ex of Ricardo. As in the day I met Ricardo in the night, in the day he broke up with a girl. Lord have mercy. And here's this girl who is like three years older than me. Saying to me, why are you always so mean to me? Because she did call one time and I did tell her he was in this post. Okay. Okay. Again, I'm not a baddest. But that was my man, right? So she did call herself one time. I did say he's in this post, right? She then says to me, <laughs> why are you always so mean to me? And I'm like, what? Who are you? And when she said her name, I just felt instant karma. Bro, because here I just left. A, a, okay, a place where I heard Ricardo was and he did with he girl. The same one who put all the hickeys on his neck. I said, well, well, well. I think that was my first dose of really understanding karma. And how and do sort of like so. And how you start is how you just finish. Boy, we could give all the phrases. Needless to say now, mm -hmm. I was out for war. Because guess what going on? You ain't going to do that to me, honey. So, now guys, you all know I'm, 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 I'm a tick thing. So, I was small than I was now, but you know, same thing. And there was this woman who was, she was real tick. She used to sell clothes downtown Shagonas. And she would sell plus size clothes. Sexy shit. Sexy. Everything. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't even say it was plus. But everything was stretch. Ha! Oh God, oh yeah. <laughs> Well, wait. <laughs> My girl... I walk in the mall the same day I went to buy the whole, the whole tracksuit, the matching tracksuit. And she started to talk to me. And let me describe this girl to you. She probably about 5'2". She wronged. She real wrong. She must be about, about 300. But she curvy, big bottom, everything. And all oh, she closed tight. And watch me. She used to have them big gold earrings. You know the ones you see on girl in putting tongue? And gold teeth. And she here was always the best. Whenever they had best hair style in tunnel, she was winning. Listen. One day she put me in a green bell-bottom pants. With a multicolor green top with one button. Okay. I was going to Capleton concert with ricardo and his friends when my aunt look at me before i leave the house she was like you ain't going nowhere take off your clothes i was like what 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 do you mean i'm my girlfriend there we ready to go ricardo and his friends waiting they hire maxi we go in to this concert she's like no 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 that's when i know my outfit was hot because my aunt didn't want me to leave the house for nothing. I said, I have to go tonight. Man, listen. I went. I went. And I was like, well, okay, listen. My outfit was a hit. My outfit was such a hit that Ricardo was vexed. <laughs> now, this is before I saw him with, you know, all the hickeys and whatever. So now fast forward and now hickey time. Well, hear yeah, what? No more baggy crisscross. Honey, I go back to my girl. So I go on to my girl. And one day she hit me 
with a white outfit. And I was like, nah, 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 I can't wear that, I can't wear that. No, this is 1995. I am 15 and a half years old. I do not have a job. These outfits are about $450, $500. My aunt is giving me the money. I, I don't know how I'm getting the money. In terms of I'm asking her and she's giving it to me. I couldn't justify that, no. But uh, my aunt was different. She, she was different. So I go now and she's like, girl, girl, you got to. <laughs> she said, you got to wear this white outfit. And I was like, nah, I can't wear that. She said, you could do it, girl. You could do it. I'm telling you. And she hands me a white spandex lycra cotton blend bell bottom pants with a matching top let me describe this outfit for you let me describe the pants first it's a bell bottom with a string to tie and the string is above a keyhole because that's for your navel to show right guys remember is that tick here and it's white so whatever we got going on it's showing and on the side had like two stripes like adidas bell bottom the top was a white crop top guys it was a crop top and with a zip in the front and two black stripes in the front because it might a matching set and i decide this night because i know ricardo and he girl could be there oh that man gonna coast out on me bro i'ma be looking hot so call my cousin mark and i was like all right we're going tunnel now guys i had a lot of freedom i must say and i didn't abuse it but i utilized it and i learned too you know because i really was not fast girl i'm not gonna lie this story might make me seem like I'm fast, but this is the fastest I think I've ever been at that particular point in my life. You know, I guess when you get a piggy, things does change. So here I am now, going to the party in this tight white bell bottom with the keyhole for, um, opening for your navel and the crop top. And I strut in myself in the tunnel, honey. She watching me in the corner. And she, I, I could see she. And I'm hanging out with me and his boys now become friends. So they hang out with me because they didn't really like the girl. What can I say? I'm my favorite. And we hanging out and now my friends is there and we chilling. And um, tunnel is over. So me and my cousin walking up the hill. Bro, my top start to open my zip start to run from north to south. And when I look back, who can I see in the distance walking? Ricardo with the white t-shirt, roll up cuff sleeve, black tights wearing, choker color wearing, man head girl. And I tell him, my cousin, Mark, you need to hurry up and pull this top up. The top's so tight. I had to hold the top. Inhale. And then Mark had to pull it up and he's struggling. And they're walking up behind me because I already calculated the, 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 the distance in which they would reach. And right when they hit the bend, that zip went north. Man, I shake up myself and I pose up on the wall. He passed. She watch me. I watch she. <sighs> and I exhaled. I don't know if I ever wear the outfit again, but let me tell you something. It was quite a still. I wish I still had pictures and I could really show of them things. But so that's my story, guys. <laughs> that is my story from my tunnel days. Um you know okay let me cover some of these comments okay good girls club absolutely somebody said they lost the vision here 24 somebody said 22 and you said 20 75 you lie um but a, a ton of story done is how i meet your father mother time no it's how i meet your father mother time 
<laughs> ah, Lord have mercy. Them looking to check you. Okay, very good. Hot mess. Okay, DJ man is good man. One hook me 11 years now. <laughs> Your man is a good man, but some of these. One get my girlfriend pregnant and don't mind the child. Let me tell you something. I don't date these entertainment guys, you know, because they don't have nothing to offer me, you know. I know from the block, um, excuse me, Joanna, I'm a certified doc, yeah? I just legit laughed out. Okay, very good. I need to write a book. I don't know. That outfit description. Um, Jion. <laughs> Wasn't I on point? Wasn't I on point? He never tried to talk back. Well, here's the thing. I'm, okay. And, and I think it would be unfair to kind of leave the story like that. I would say that that was a very instrumental relationship in my life because... He kind of went on and lived his life and, you know, but his friends remained my good friends. They remained my friends to the point where I couldn't even date anybody else unless they were real, real, real legit because they had my back. They didn't want me to experience um, th that level of heartbreak again because I done must be done cry to all of them and why and da, 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 da. but I gained them as really good friends in the process um, and they're still good friends up to today and you know I, I gained so much more in that now he, Ricardo and I are still in contact to this day I would never he is one person he's one ex that I would always still talk to because for me, we had a really good relationship, okay? Um, and I appreciated what happened, good or bad, but he never, I don't know, I, I never felt like, like, like he ever really disrespected me or, you know, anything to where I could be like, I hate him. When it ended, I, I, I may have didn't want it to end, but I was okay, you know? And um, yeah. So he's still good. He, he he's a good guy. He got a whole bunch of, um, you know, um, of kids, and he, he has his own business, and he you know he's married and stuff like that. Um, but we definitely share those memories from time to time, and we do laugh. He actually got a similar tattoo to what I got, and I'll tell you a little funny story because one day a girlfriend of mine and me were at his house, and you know what I really loved about my first love was how we connected right I love I love how we connected because even though I was 15 and a half and he was like just turned 21 I, I had a mature mindset and you know he he would do things that would mimic my swag you know so like I had this long dread he grew a long dread too you know um, I had beads in mine he, he got beads in his you know, he never hid me to his family. He had an aunt. Let me tell you something. He had an aunt who would make some really nasty comments about me. She would say all types of things. I was young. She would talk about my weight. She would do a lot of things and that never fazed him. He would always defend me, you know. Um, and he brought me home to meet his mom, even though she's like, this is this young girl. Da, da, da. But, you know, um, so I would say that it was for me overall, I would have to say it was a good experience. Um, but this one particular time though, and this is, this is, this is interesting because sometimes your words, is, your words have power. And so I'm at his house one time and my girlfriend is there and we're talking and, and he was like, so you've never seen me before? And I was like, no, I've never seen you before. You know, he lives close to where my school is. I never seen this guy. And my girlfriend says, you have seen him. And I was like, bitch, where? She said, one day we were walking out of school. And he was driving down. So he always drove down to, drove down into the school, you know, like when school was over, you know, guys. And she said, one day, I looked directly at him and I said, I want a guy just like that. Or, or I, or, or I want to date him or something. I still don't believe her to this day, but she swears by it. And uh, yeah. So I did. I, I guess I totally manifested that. But I think I really came into like my womanness at that point, you know, because I really felt so 
like empowered, you know? I mean, I was already a little popular at school and I already had the, my own mind and I was counseling other kids and helping them with their badasses when they're trying to do crazy stuff. But here I had my own relationship, you know? And um, honey, mm-hmm, it was something else. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This was story time flashback and this was all about my teenage um you know good girl ton bad kind of thing um ricardo is not his real name but you know if you know you know and if you don't know well it was too long ago anyway so thank you guys so much guys you know this sunday um at 2 p.m it will be my next show in my series it is uh um a love story how we met i'll be featuring a very special couple you'll see more of that tomorrow and then of course it's testimonials won't he do it i have a very special guest on who's going to give us a very powerful testimony about god thank you guys so much for tuning in i really appreciate it and you guys have a great 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 night